So let's make our URLs user friendly. To do that, we will create a slug property inside the song model. So let's open song model. And here we will create the slug property. And you already saw this when we created our first application in these tutorials. But now you will see more details how this actually works. So let's create a public string, I'll call slug. And here we can right away specify that we want to replace any spaces with the dashes and that we want to keep everything lowercase. So we'll go to our name dot replace and we are replacing space character with a dash character. And after that, we will perform to lower. So everything's gonna be lowercase. So we can use this slug as an additional ID. Instead of just going to the song controller slash edit as a URL, we can go to song slash edit and then use the actual name of the song. So that's gonna be in the slug. And we can also construct it with the year, for example. We can concatenate any string we want to it. So for example, I can do another dash in our URL and then concatenate the year to it. And the year is an integer, so let's convert it to a string. So now I can add this slug into the URL after the ID. Let me just show you what I mean. I'll go to random application. And when I click, for example, edit, you can see it says songs slash edit and then ID one. But it would be more user friendly if after one, there would be another slash and it would say that we are editing master of puppets. And master of puppets is three words that's why we are adding the dashes. So it would say master dash of dash puppets. And then it will also say the year. So it will have another dash and then 1980. So this would give the user a friendly URL of the song that the user is actually editing rather than just having the ID in the URL. So this is our slug property in our song. And in order to use it as a URL, we have to go to the startup and add it to our routing because currently it only expects the ID. So we have to tell this MVC that we also can pass optionally the slug. So after ID, I will pass another optional parameter. So in curly braces, it's the slug and it's an optional. So it needs to have the question mark to it. So now our routing is set up for the slug, but we're still not passing it in uh, the link. We do that in our views. Now in our index, we are passing the route for the ID. And now we can also pass the slug because that's our another optional route that we can use. So here I will also specify another route. So ASP route dash and I will specify that I want to pass in the slug. And it's a lowercase slug. This is what we have in our startup as the optional parameter. So that is our optional route that we add in here. And the slug itself comes from the song. So we'll use the song dot. And this is the slug property. You can see now it's available. So as you can see, we can pass in multiple routings. The ID is the most common one. We simply pass in ID to edit the record, but we can also pass in the slug in this case, or you can have any other route and name them anything you want. So I just want to show you that you can have multiple routes. That doesn't mean that if you pass in an ID, you cannot pass anything else into these actions. And I'm going to add this to my delete button as well. So I'm going to copy that and paste it right here. So when I click these buttons, I will open the views for the edit and delete and the URL will have the slug in it. So it will have the name of the song that we are editing or deleting. Now when we go to our edit and delete, we don't need to use it here. This is just a view that already displays the song that we are deleting. So the URL is already up there in our view. 
The same with the edit. There is nowhere to add the slug here because this is a song that we are adding or editing and the slug is in the URL that opens this view. And this view only opens from our index when we click the buttons in our index action or in our index view. So let's run this and see if it works. So I'm going to click edit and down here you can already see that it says Master of Puppets 1980. So it gets the slug and passes it into the URL. You can see here it is. This is our URL. And I can edit it. Let's say Master of Puppets 2. Click edit and everything works. The same with the delete. You can see when I hover over delete it goes to the delete action and it goes to Master of Puppets 2 1980. Now one thing that didn't change is that the song and delete are still uppercase. I want them to be lowercase as well. So let's have a look why it didn't change to lowercase. And the reason why the controller and action are not in lowercase is because we only specify the lowercase for the slug. If you go to a song, you can see we simply get the name of the song and set it to lowercase. But it does not actually change the whole URL to lowercase. To do that, we have to go to startup.cs. And in the startup.cs we will add another service into configure services that will set the options for the routing to set the URLs to lowercase. So I'm going to get another service and I'm going to add routing. Now obviously we already route based on the controller and the action but we want to specify the options for the routing. So we create a lambda for our options. And the options I want is to set the URLs to lowercase. So I'll go to options dot and I want to go to lowercase URLs. And I'm going to set it to true. So this will set the URLs to lowercase even if the controllers and actions are uppercase. And I'm going to add another option here. So I'll go to options and I want to add a trailing slash after the URL. So when the URL ends, it will end with a slash. This is a common practice because it will let the user to enter any arguments after the slash without actually needing to remember to type the slash. So again, this is just a part of creating friendly URLs. And to do that, we'll use the append trailing slash in our options and set it to true. And with this, we should now have our URLs in lowercase and there should be a trailing slash at the end of the URL. Let's run this and I'm going to add a new song and you can see down in the corner that everything is in lowercase. Now there is no slug here because we are adding a song so there is no song yet so we cannot add a slug. So let's just create one quickly just one last test. So test song let's say 11 year is gonna be 2006 Let's select genre and rating. Click add and here is our test song. So now when I go to edit, you can see the URL is lowercase. It has a training slash after the year and it has the slag test song 11-2006 as we set it up. So now let's try to edit this record. We created it just fine, but let's edit it. I'm just going to change the song name, click edit and everything works. And now let's try to delete it. I click delete and click delete and we get an error. And the error is with the slug. So we were almost there. So what could be wrong? The editing song worked, editing song worked, but deleting didn't. And the reason it didn't work is because slug is an optional parameter for the URL. We are passing it in our index over here with the ID but we are deleting the song that belongs to this ID only. The slug is just a URL that we created. So in order to work with the slug as an optional parameter for the URL, we have to go to a slug property and make it optional as well, or basically make it nullable. So we will simply add the question marks after the properties. So after the name, I'll add the question mark. If it's supplied, I will replace it. And after a year, I will also make it nullable and use the question mark. 
So these are the little tricks that may confuse you when you run it and suddenly it works like 99% and then there's this one thing that doesn't work. So these are the things that you have to pay attention to and honestly, they will get you every single time. So let's run it now. And I'm going to try to delete it again. Click delete. You can see the URL is still in lowercase and it has the slug in it for the deletion. And I click delete and now it worked because now it didn't take it into account because it was nullable. All right, so this is our application. We got to use all the MVC knowledge we already acquired from the previous exercises and added much more to it. Now we know how to create a database, how to make a simple query for the database, how to add a record, edit record or delete a record. We are quite familiar now how to bind the elements of the form to the properties of the class. We work with the tag helpers again. This time we work with the routes quite extensively, including using multiple routes. You learned how to actually add some options to the setup.cs for the routing. So I hope this was an exercise that pushed your knowledge further than it was at the beginning of it. So thank you for watching and let's move on to even more complex projects.